Bramborough back with some Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Austria-Hungary campaign that we began in January 1910. And we are now into July 1916, right at the outbreak of our second war with France. The second uh, Franco-Austrian War. <clears throat> that opened with quite a few clashes in the last episode, and our destroyers were heavily engaged and did pretty well. There was one battle where it was just too much, and I withdrew them <laughs> successfully. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> here the opening salvos have gone quite well for us. And, you know, basically 14,000 VP versus 10 for France. And the situation is such that in the West Med, we now have more power projection than France. Or, for that matter, Italy as well. While maintaining uh, a pretty overwhelming preponderance of power projection in the East Med. Most of this power projection in the East Med is coming from our cruisers. Uh, I do retain one pair of battle cruisers up at Pula, but they're just in port in being. Uh, most of our capital ships are in the West Med. We have two pairs of prowling uh, battle cruisers on invade mode. We've got a couple uh, destroyer squadrons out. Well, one here, one here, and then we've got a battleship centered task force. Uh, two battleships and four heavy cruisers in sea control mode. The destroyers are in protect mode, both in the West and the East Med. That's the situation. Let's proceed into August 1916. Looks like we got a, a meeting engagement coming of some type. I don't see the icon anywhere on the map yet. And there we go. Um, Tensions between Britain and France kind of negated positive in the North Atlantic, negative in the West Med. Really? Alliance with Britain. I don't know about that. Asking to sign a special trade agreement, which will be not profitable for us, but which will strengthen our relations. Yeah, I'm not giving Britain $200 million and dropping my naval budget percentage and increasing my unrest. Yeah, yeah, we're going this way. Oh, minus 50, though. That's a pretty big smack. I think we're positive. You can't see it right now. Uh, I think we're pretty positive with Britain, though. I think this will basically take us down to within a few points of neutral. So... We'll do that. We'll, we'll do this. Interesting. Six of our Lika class destroyers have managed to find a lone unescorted battleship. I think I like the sound of that. Let's pop in. No, they'll need torpedoes. For, I know I like, you know, I'm turning the torpedoes off. I want to see if we can sink it with gunfire. No, I think we'll need torpedoes for this one. <laughs> okay, let's just pause a sec and see what they've done to me for... Okay, so we have two destroyers in, quote, screen mode, unquote. Okay, uh, I, I didn't mention this right when I started the episode, but you can see down in the corner we're now in 1.08.3. There, there's been another small update to the game today. And uh, one of the notes said, okay, we've tinkered with the formations a little bit. They should act a little better. I'm skeptical. Let's just leave it as it is and find out. <laughs> 
this div two may just be all kinds of messed up. So, or we may be pleasantly surprised. Okay, uh, smoke to the west. Okay, I think we're just pretty much pointed right where we need to be. Morning, clear weather, slight. Okay. A clear weather, and then you look around and it's all overcast. One thing I've never been a fan of about this game, and apparently it's still this way, is the. Uh, You know, the visual representation here of the weather often doesn't match the conditions. I mean, I guess it could still be, I don't know. I mean, some like, like for example, you can say nighttime or stormy. And, you know, out here it looks just sunny. <laughs> anyway, let's head on. Let's go ahead and turn our uh, torpedoes off. We want to make sure that we don't shoot until I want to, not the captain of the ship. Otherwise, they'll. Sometimes not shoot quite like I would like. Slow that down a second. Let's see how it... All right, coming to my force. That suits me just fine. Peppering him with uh, 4.9s. Uh-oh. Looks like a better smoke up. They also said, are these uh, ships kind of behaving as far as not snaking back and forth? So far, yeah. But, that, but I haven't moved yet. We'll see what happens when we start maneuvering. Start trying to get across his bow, if he'll let me. Starting quite a few fires on him. <laughs> Sixteen, go to save. Torpedoes away. D8. Well, better. Hold fire just a second there.
have waited too long to uh, why are you not firing they having tr trouble getting the no the tubes are trained toward uh, the target let's just give it everybody that yeah everyone's got the save order <clears throat> I, I thought the entire division had torpedoes enabled Well, we got him for fire. Okay. <laughs> A little flash fire or ammo dead or something right there at the end. Pretty good gun accuracies. 100% torpedo accuracy from D16 and from D7. Now, that might have been the torpedo hit right there at the end. But... Uh, Burned them down. I'd like to know. Oh, it does. It does break it out. Damage received. Nine hundred and twenty-two damage from four-inch fire. One hundred nineteen hits. Three thousand damage. From looks like four torpedo hits. Okay, good. And every and two from D16, two from D7. So basically every torpedo hit. And interestingly, he sank, or the ship was destroyed rather, I guess, from uh, extensive fire. However, the fire didn't actually do that much damage. 234. I guess it was just so widespread. Okay. France already wants a peace tree. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, for two reasons. Number one... Because we're at war, we're getting a heck of a budget boost to the Navy. So let's keep that going longer. Number two, we got some kind of... You know, we got some, some uh, island or colonial ports from France in the last war that aren't that big. In order to grab, uh, you know, big ports like Toulon, Marseille, etc., we would have to win a smashing victory. I basically sink their entire fleet, I would imagine. I don't even know if that's possible, if you can get, like, the core home ports like that. But if it is possible, we're going to need to win a bigger victory than this. So we're going to let this go for a while and see what happens if we basically just sink the entire French fleet. That's our recommendation as the Navy, anyway. That, that does not mean that our government may not make peace, anyway. Back to the end. Okay, that's good. It seems like not very many transport losses for France, given that there's a pair of battlecruisers, uh, or uh, a pair of, you know, four battlecruisers, two pairs of battlecruisers, roaming around the West Med uh, on invade mode. Okay, that seems to have taken care of August 1916. And I think this destroyer, we, we had some repairing destroyers down here at Tunis. A 
D16 is repairing it. C. All these got, yeah. These six are back ready to go again. Let's put them out. Uh, sure, over here. Protect mode. September 1916. Let's go. Nope, there's a French task force bopping around over here. War continues. Okay. Looks like we got two battles uh, about to happen. The press in various countries fully support us. Positive relations with Britain and Italy. Okay, there's another French uh, top admiral or navy minister, whichever it is, replaced. I think he's the fourth one fired. At least the third. I think the fourth. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. We got two battle cruisers against a lone. battleship. I think this battleship's a little bit larger than ones we have seen before. What's up with this guy? Ocean class or a Ocean class, something like that. <laughs> 26 almost 27,000 tons. It's still significantly cheaper than ours, which says a little something about the tech in that thing. Uh, 21 knots. Trained crews, standard bulkheads, 12.6 inch guns. Well, all right. Let's see how Artemisia and Donal do against Ocean. Smoke to the northwest, pretty much pointed that way. So off we go. Some distance away, we're at, you know. When 30 time compression is available, you're a ways out. And then you get closer and it drops to 10, and then it's sighting. From one side or the other, it'll drop to 5. So if it drops to five and I don't see them, it means that they see me. <laughs> there we go. Just angle off this way. Incoming. Okay. We're already at, after two salvos, we're off to, uh, we're at 35% accuracy right now. Their battleship is at nine kilometers. And it looks like it could be evening time. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know if we've seen this one before. I didn't really look at the last battleship very closely that our uh, destroyer sank. So 12.6 inch guns here. 
pair of wing turrets here, a pair of wing turrets here, aft turret, these must be the 8.4s here and here, and then a bunch of smaller secondaries all over the place. identified yet. I don't think we necessarily need to close it any more than we are though. Let's let's turn away. It ranges like this, that is way more beneficial for us. If we get too close, then uh, his accuracy I mean oh. Ours and his accuracy will continue to improve, but his accuracy might get good enough where he starts landing an uncomfortable number of hits. he's close enough that he's starting to get some pretty good accuracy. Let, yeah, we got a little close there. He's got a destroyed tower, though. That's going to hurt it. Well, he's even at this close. He's only at 3.6% on his mains. shooting HE, I think. Yeah, they, they really should be. I'm just going to turn this way a little bit to make sure that the main gun turrets stay unmasked. says we penetrated the main gun. Seventeen point two inches on his main gun turrets. Plus 60% armor quality. That's that's a problem. I think that's like Croup 1 at best. Maybe even Harvey. Oh, well, it says that somewhere, doesn't it? Uh, I 
Yeah, Harvey armor. That is just not going to cut it in 1916, my friend. Yeah, we've got nice, nice pin percentages now. Looking too good for Ocean. Let's go in there, buddy. A little toasty, a little, to a little warm in there. Taking 22% crew losses. I think it's going to be the fire that gets them. That's what I suspect. Just judging from what it looks like in his compartments. 54 fires running. Yeah, I think the, uh, remember one of our refits, we uh, upgraded from a lot of 1.1s and put more, uh, three point nines on them. It seems to, seems to be doing well. They didn't contribute that much damage directly, but 14 out of the total 60, 65 fires have been set by the 3.9s. I think that's a good upgrade. And they've got more range. That was a problem with the 1.1s as well. These few 1.1s are just what was sitting up in the superstructure. I didn't change those. And then for weight reasons, I dialed back from 4.9 to 4.7 on the uh, casemate, hull casemate guns. Oh, oh, I thought his uh, turrets were maybe not in training, but they are. Why are we only getting seven point, well, nope, flooding, okay. Fifty-four and twenty-five percent. It was actually done out, the second ship in line that did much better, because it was a little closer once we made the turn, I think. 2.5% accuracy for Ocean. 2 damage and 12 damage received. Light damage to both. Just enough to put them in the yards for a month. <laughs> you basically just need to slap some paint on the hull where there was a little bit of a dent. And this can't be right, can it? We have two battleships and four cruisers. against a lone destroyer. I'm gonna... 
I'm going to play this battle for one reason only. Just because we haven't seen our battleships in a ba on the tactical map before. Crown Prince, Rudolph, and Tegatov. Watch me get torpedoed now. <laughs> It might take a while to find this little bugger. He's probably going to retreat. It, it, and obviously he's faster. Anyway, like I said, I'm only doing this to show our, our, our battleships. I think they're pretty. That's a good looking ship. Beamy. Lots of stability. Okay. I kind of wish it was a sunnier day since I'm just showing off the... Not all that terribly fast. 25 knots. Which meant I was able to not use the biggest funnel available. Just didn't need it. So saved a little weight there. A little cost there. 4.9 uh, inch guns in the hull casemates. And we've got uh, 2.9s. And the few mounts up on the superstructure were those. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Mains are obvious. Hull casemate, 4.9. And uh, 2.9s on the superstructure. Anyway, I don't think we're going to find this destroyer. So I'm just going to cut out here. Okay, France has lost three more transport ships in the West Med. And, and yeah, we didn't sight that destroyer before. Was able to end the battle. Only went in there to show off the pretty battleship. That's all. On into October 1916. Well. Britain and France are getting along again a little bit. Bully for them. Okay, we've unlocked a uh, secondary mount, triple barrels. That may come in handy in the near future. So far, haven't used it. I've used some, right? We, we've, got, we've got a few here and there, but haven't used a ton of secondary mounts for the simple reason that just the nature of the hulls, there's not that many. Uh, but as soon as we get into the hulls where the casemate mounts are gone, those tend to be... Uh, they have a lot more deck space for secondary mounts up on the main deck. Or up on the weather deck. The main deck is actually a deck below. So uh, this will come into play eventually. Another transport lost. Okay, task force battle. What's up with this? Oh, it looks like uh, some League of Class destroyers are going to murder a light cruiser. I wonder why we're getting so many single opponent ship uh, battles generated. I guess possibly because they're just flat running out of ships. Well, that's interesting. We've got a huge power... Oh, I think because... Yeah, our two new battleships have been completed. They're at Pula, and Pula is not where we want them. 
Those two battleships were built specifically to come to Bizerta, which is now up to 56,000 tons, <laughs> which means I could have made 28,000 ton uh, ships. Anyway, move ships to Bizerta and Albert will pull. Okay, we have three in battle line and three in screen. I'm gonna let the guns do it again. Because I just like doing that. It's possible that cruiser might run. I doubt he can run at 37 knots. Okay, getting closer. And there he is. And his light cruiser, yeah, he's, he's uh, if it's the same class, he's got uh, three tubes port, three tubes starboard, and a fair number of reloads. It didn't take very much damage. Why does the division leader shift like that? Well, I don't want you circling all the way around to the back, so... snake in front of those uh, torpedoes? Looks like a yes. I don't think his are going to hit though. No, oh, one did. Good job. This doesn't seem to be tracking right. It looks weird. I don't think he's going to make it. Your best chance is to go straight. Your best chance is to go straight. Nope. Nope. Oh. <laughs> I think his are going to hit though. There he goes. Let's get out before Lika sinks. <laughs> uh, D6, rather. They're all Likas. Okay, I think we took some medium damage there, it looks like. Friant on the bottom.
medium damage to D16. Okay, that, that probably pulled him off, pulled him off station. Yeah, they're all back in uh, Saint Florent, which is where they should be. I don't know why I can't change their. Uh... I don't know why I can't change their mission. Hmm. All right. Advance uh one more month into November nineteen sixteen. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, we're not going to fight this battle on the, I'm not going to, let me rephrase that. I'm not going to record this battle. Um, so I think it's going to be like the last one. The, the only reason I'm even going into the tactical battle at all, I, why I'm not auto-resolving is that, you know, the auto-resolve might show, oh, Roskowski got torpedoed. Six month repair. Yeah, we're not going to have that. I'll be back and then we'll go see what the other battle is once this one is uh, take. Well, let's do it this way. Well, I don't have the option. I have to fight it. Okay. All right. I'll be back. Yeah, we didn't find that destroyer. And uh, here we have a convoy battle where. We are attacking, once again, a rather large convoy uh, defended by a light cruiser and a destroyer of their own. <clears throat> it's quite a ram bow on that <laughs> light cruiser there. Okay, we've got yeah, I, I don't want I don't want them in screen. Let's go to uh let's just go to follow div one. Okay, now let's see how that see how they maneuver into that in one point zero eight point three. Almost hit there. <laughs> Alright, they're getting kind of sorted out there. Let's slow everybody down to 30 knots, see how they do with the station keeping. You know, I think they have improved it a little bit. There's a there's a little bit of snaking back and forth back here, but I've seen worse. I've seen worse. Well, you know, I was I was bragging on you, and then you go do this nonsense. <laughs>
Oh, because there's still a 37 knots. It's a different division. Okay, fair enough. And But now that... I spoke too soon. Oh, there are all kinds of messed up back there. D1's like, what are you clowns doing back there? Was that a smoke to the southwest? Did we just run right past them? I guess I did. <laughs> put a cut just prior to this. Okay, here's the cruiser. Let's go ahead and kill the cruiser now. destroy over here I thought I saw something yeah sure fire torpedoes it's fine yeah he's maneuvering it was too early Turn the torpedoes off. There is a destroyer over there. There's other incoming fire. Okay, let's Oh crap. Your best bet is to try to comb. I don't think he was gonna make it anyway. Ouch. Should be able to shoot from the starboard side. Yes, no? Maybe? Ow! Ammo dead. Ooh. Bad news for D1. I did get his torpedoes off, though. Let's detach D1. Didn't sink, did he? Thought I just attached him. Well, we're treat if you can. I don't know if you're going to be able to. Oh, two of them got smacked there.
This isn't really going all that hot, is it? There's the destroyer. You know what? Let's have all these guys. Shoot at the destroyer. Don't know why D4 is going so slow. bugged out, I guess. D1 down. Okay, France is winning this battle so far. Max speed. Let's get in there for this torpedo attempt. D2 down. But as good a geometry as you're going to get. Torpedoes away. Let's go. Too close. There we go. division to help finish off the light cruiser there. And let's just have D4 fall in behind. Okay. 
kind of like to go beat up all those transports. Well, what happened here? I don't understand what's happening with these two divisions. Uh, he had torpedoes a little while ago. That means that there's torps in the water. Yeah, I don't see a damaged torpedo mount there, so... Really? <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. All that ocean. Point twos. He's not exactly uh, poorly armed himself. Wow, a lot of them too. Several of them are out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven four point two mounts. The majority of which have been wrecked already. That may have been kind of messing with their maneuvering. I left the uh, torpedo avoidance on. It's down to 11 knots. down there. Well, it's a good win. It wasn't as good as it could have been due to D1 and D2.
going down. Lost 300 crew. All right. And so, actually, they scored almost as many victory points as we did. Even though we sank uh, a light cruiser and a destroyer. Not that big versus two destroyers, but I'm sure that our destroyer... Yeah, these are $7.5 million destroyers, whereas Basque is a $5 million destroyer. And this light cruiser... See nine point three. So almost fifteen million dollars worth of ships here, and fifteen million dollars worth of ships here. Okay, I think that that will do for this episode. The war continues in the uh, Mediterranean. Uh, there's not much of a French Navy left. We'll see what we got here. France has, says they still have 38 ships. Don't know where they all are. They don't have anything in the east. They've got one light cruiser and five destroyers. So they got six ships in the West Med. Two more in the North Atlantic. And a destroyer in the English Channel. So they may have 38 ships, but they've only got nine that are in an operational status. The others are repairing or mothballed, I guess. How many are they building? Oh, there, yeah, there it is. Uh, they're repairing 29 ships. So, okay, so that math does work out. Why are they repairing 29 ships? We haven't damaged that many. We have sunk just about everything we've run into. We haven't damaged... 29 ships that survived battle. Oh, I forgot. They're at war with Italy, too. <laughs> so we're sinking ships, and Italy is damaging ships. That's got to be doing a number to their naval budget. And, and that kind of makes sense. Uh... The auto-resolve, some ships do get sunk, but with the auto-resolve, mostly what happens is varying levels of damage to the ships involved. It's, and uh, unless it's just a one versus one, it's pretty rare for a fleet to get, as I remember, I don't, I, you know, I have, I don't often auto-resolve, but I've done test runs where I auto resolves a lot when I was back when I was trying to figure out uh, power projection and blockade and things like that. So I wasn't I was trying to zip through and not fight a bunch of battles. So I auto resolved a lot and I noticed that not very many ships got sunk. A whole ton of them got put into repair though. So that's that's what's happening. It's the war with Italy is why they're repairing so many ships. Okay. If you like what we're doing with the channel, if you like the content here, then leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe. If 
you're new to the channel, the series, and want to catch the other episodes in this series that you may not have seen yet, I'm linking the playlist here. At any rate, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it.